What's up guys, Philip Collin, Pack Pythons, back in the snake pit, and today we're gonna do an update video. I have been crazy busy. So, last time we spoke, I found out that three animals tested NIDO positive out of my 69 animals I tested, and we ordered 10 more tests from Fishhead Labs, and we've got some extra test kits from RAL, and we're going to double test uh, 10 more, 10 animals out of the collection. I'll go into that in a minute. Before we get into that, uh, wanted to give you guys an update on the fundraising. I haven't checked Teespring lately, but I know in PayPal we had raised like 25 bucks, which is exciting for the research and the testing that is gonna come up here pretty soon for the nidovirus. We have three nidovirus positive animals that we plan to work with and have a few uh, strategic, uh, strategic experiments planned to try to fine tune uh, the testing process. So that is coming very soon. Uh, first, we need to retest all our animals. Uh, before we get into all that, the $25 we raised was on PayPal. The links are down in the description if you guys are interested in supporting the cause. I've had a ton of people reach out and want to be supportive. Really appreciate that. Um, we also are raising funds on our Teespring account. So if you buy any merch, all the money we raise there is going to this uh, research. And I think we've raised $22 there so far. So that's nothing to shake a stick at. I appreciate all of it. Uh, and then John Lehman, or Lehman, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his last name. Uh, he is the creator of Morph Market. Uh, we were talking last week and he gave some funds, uh, $225, that's gonna go completely to the Nidovirus research. Super stoked about that. So that's a huge jump in the right direction. Again, if you guys are interested in helping, links are all down in the description. Uh, John, thank you very much. If you guys know John, reach out to him. Thank him for me. I uh, definitely appreciate his help. Uh, so, the good news. It's been a week since I've given you guys an update and nothing has died. So, we're making progress. Things aren't dying anymore. Um, we do have... Uh, I think we still have four animals showing clinical signs all of those four animals tested negative the three animals that tested positive are all still asymptomatic healthy no issues almost everyone in the collection is eating fantastically right now no issues there uh, recently the weather's changed it's gotten a lot colder and the humidity has dropped significantly it's been a pain in the butt i've had probably a dozen bad sheds this week and that's super time consuming having to soak animals and uh, soak animals and assist with shedding and then have to like deep clean all the tubs that you soak the animals in and then having to you know wash your hands between everything you touch and wash and, ugh, everything when thinking and considering biosecurity and cross-contamination avoiding cross-contamination everything takes forever it's a pain in the butt so uh, been meaning to do these test kits and I haven't gotten around to it for one I've been crazy crazy busy I'm like working 80 hours a week six days a week I was supposed to be off Tuesday for voting and that didn't happen I ended up working anyways and still managed to get there and vote which is great hope you all got got out there and went and vote if you cared to uh, the test kits I got 10 from Fishhead Lab. Fishhead Labs, Lab. Fishhead Diagnostics. I don't know, I don't know what they call them. I've always heard it called Fishhead Labs. That's not what it says on the paperwork. But I got 10 kits. Uh, those 10 kits are gonna be used for the three animals that tested positive, we're gonna retest them. The four animals that we expected to test positive, we're gonna retest them. The there's three more that I'm just gonna pick out of this group. I got a couple in mind and maybe just one randomly. Uh, and that's just gonna be for you know double checking. And then to kind of 
go along with what we're thinking as far as the shedding cycle of the virus, the nidovirus, uh, it is possible that some of these animals were not in a shed cycle when we tested the whole group initially, which gave us a false negative, and they could potentially be back in a shed cycle now. So if I just tested with fish head and got a, a, po a new positive, then that could sound like the original test from RAL was incorrectly, you know, just wasn't done right or whatever. But it very well could have been done correctly and it just, that animal wasn't shedding the virus at the time. So to avoid that possibility or that chance of, the chance of that happening, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the 10 animals with fish head kits and at the exact same time, I'm gonna take, uh, right here, I've got a bunch of extras. I'm gonna take 10 test kits from RAL and I'm gonna test the exact same animals. So I'm gonna send out 10 test kits one, on one day, 10 to RAL and 10 to fish head. I'm gonna let them both run the tests. RAL will have the results back the next day. Fish head will have the results back a week later. They take a little longer, but then we can compare and see what happens. Um, if we get anything that does show up new as negative, hopefully the kits all show the same. And if we have any of the negatives or the ones that were positive show up positive again, hopefully that matches uh, on both sides. So we'll just see how that plays out. Once we get through those 10 test kits and we get all the results back, that's gonna kinda tell us if we need to make any adjustments to where everything is. And assuming we don't, then we move into the next phase. My quarantine rack that the animals are in upstairs right now, it's very similar to this setup here. Uh, back heat on a thermostat, tubs on a melamine rack, that whole thing. Um, not sure if that's gonna be perfect for the tests that I wanna do. I may, I, I keep kinda of going back and forth. I'm really not sure how I want to set things up because I want them to be in a very well controlled temperature environment and humidity environment. And the, these are good for that. Um, but the problem is this space is conditioned on top of these racks being uh, heated and controlled with a thermostat, this whole space is controlled with a AC on a thermostat. So where they're at upstairs, they're just in a room, which is air conditioned. I've got the vents blocked and that you know obviously helps. And when the heater is running in the house because it's cold out, we open the vents to let the heat build up in that room. But that's not a very controllable situation. And I want it to be extremely controllable. I want an environment as close to perfect as possible and constant. Uh, it's the only way that I can really trust the results of the testing I plan to do. So I'm considering building PVC enclosures that are really, it's gonna be really small because these are hatchlings. We have three hatchlings. Um, and I'm not sure how I would control the heat yet, or it, I may just do like belly heat or something like that, but uh, I keep kind of going back and forth. I could potentially just do uh, sealed tubs, go get some legit sealed tubs, actually very similar to this up here. This is a, a sealed tub by itself with a locking cap. A lot of people keep those for their pets in their bedrooms or whatever. Um, if I could do one small enough with its own uh, belly heat and maintain a perfect temperature on a thermostat, that might be exactly what I need to do. I'm not sure yet. So we'll have to kind of play with it and see. But we'll get there little by little. Uh, once I fine tune a perfect environment, then I will move them. I'm gonna set up the environment, get it perfect then move the animals into that environment. And then I could potentially have three separate tubs on three separate thermostats and fine tune them each perfectly to 
different temperature ranges and try to run different experiments with each animal. Um, so, still kind of up in the air. Again, this research is not going to be cheap. Any support you guys offer is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, real quick, before we go, I'm going to do some sticker shout outs. I got a couple new ones. If you guys, if I promised you about a month ago a sticker swap, if I did and you haven't received my stickers yet, PM me on Instagram or DM me or whatever y'all call that anymore. Uh, message me on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I guess you could send me an email, technically, whatever. I don't care. Let me know. I think there's about 10 people that I had on a list. I went through my notes and rearranged a bunch of stuff and the whole list got deleted. So all the people that I, I'm about to send out some merch and stuff to a bunch of people. Those people are good. I know your addresses. I got them all saved in my information. But there was, a, like I said, several of you guys that I had on the list and I completely screwed up and deleted it. So go me. All right. Number one, she morphs. That's Sarah. I don't know Sarah's last name. She's a local here near Savannah. I think she's in, I want to say she's in Rinkin. Something like that. So, what's up, Sarah? Uh, she's on Instagram and Facebook. I think she's on Instagram. <laughs> Links will be down in the description, whatever I can find. Any of these people. Y'all go show them some love. If wherever, Whatever platform you prefer, go find these people and check them out. Uh, Modern Exotics, Colorado. Very cool. Ball python and that might be a... A day gecko or something? I don't know. That's a bizarre looking lizard. Let's see, who else? This one just came in today. Uh, Jordy Morphs. That came from overseas, I think in the UK, possibly. Uh, who else, who else? I think this one's new. Uh, Sir, uh, Sithers Serpents. Blah, blah, blah. Say that three times fast. Sithers Serpents. Uh, I don't know if I did this one. I'll just go ahead and double do them if, just in case. Leviathan Snakes. Very cool. Uh, da, da, da. Weezen Snakes. A Weezen Two Snakes. <laughs> Is that supposed to... I think their last name might be Wezen or Weezen. And it's supposed to sound like we are into snakes, like we's into snakes. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Casey Reptile Lab, LLC. These guys just hooked me up with some cocoa bedding. So this is going to get tried out here pretty soon. Check it out. The uh, Coco Loco. There's all their information. We're going to give them a try. It says 100% dust free. Sustainable, eco friendly, renewable, recyclable. And it says somewhere on here 100% dust free and odorless chips. It's awesome. So, definitely looking forward to trying that out. Uh, da, 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 da. Pretty sure this one's new Dreamscape Dragons. And this is gonna probably be the last one. E Town Exotics. Thank you guys for all the stickers. Y'all are awesome. A couple of those came with some really awesome letters encouraging me about everything we have going on. I really appreciate all the support. Can't thank you guys enough. Got a ton of swag going out to a bunch of other YouTubers and friends and other breeders. Uh, you probably are following some of them. You'll see some of those pop up on your timeline here in the next week or so. Uh, but that's it. We're going to wrap it up here. I uh, appreciate you guys being patient with me as I have been busy. Uh, stay tuned. We got a couple videos planned uh, once we get a little further into this process. So thanks again. Much love. If you haven't subscribed yet, we just hit, we're about to hit like 700 subscribers which is cool, so cool. <laughs> we are creeping closer and closer 
to that thousand mark and i can't wait man that's awesome it's very very encouraging to keep the keep all this going uh if you haven't subscribed hit it right here and i'll put a playlist right here if you guys want to go check out some of my other videos y'all take it easy if it ain't easy don't take it peace